How's it going, aliens? My name's Alien. Today, I'm back on another Identity Five video. Today, we're doing a um. How's it going, aliens? My name's Alien. Today, I'm back on another Identity Five video. Today, I will be doing another. What do I call this video again? Oh, uh, patch notes overview video. This time, it's for. October 24th slash October 25th. Ignore everything that you just heard. And let's get right into the video. Okay. So, to start off the video first, like every video, I'll plug my Discord link. I'll plug my Discord link. Um, in the pinned comment below, please join. We're so close to 100 members. Next, giveaway news. I, um... Actually, haven't picked a winner. I have to do the YouTube comment um, website. Well, this video is going to be long, so I'll just do it offline. I'll have the winner in the pinned comment below, and um, and I'll send them a friend request. And I'll, if you're the winner, it'll be in the comment below, um, so you can see there. And I'll send you the gift. Next. Uh, so. I know that I haven't been posting too many videos. My last video was a week ago on this exact topic. But trust me, I'll post more videos this week and this weekend. Uh, I'll have guides and stuff. Our regular videos are returning. Um, now that I have more time to make them. And even though this week I won't have too much time, but as many of y'all may know, there is going to be a tournament being hosted this Saturday. I will be in it more than likely since I am a top player, so I will be in it. So go check out on Persuable's Twitch channel, Root Me. There will be Saturday night, and I will be in it, so I have to be practicing and stuff. And now let's get into the patch notes. So first, it'll take four hours to complete. This is the biggest update ever in Identity 5. I know I've said that two times before, but every time it's been true, and this is honestly the biggest update we've had. Just look at the amount of patch notes, I amount of pictures I have. So first, the Halloween event. It's Halloween at the Manor. Halloween children dress up as monsters and go trick-or-treating. Everyone at the Manor is also dressing up, getting ready for the start of the happy Halloween party. Event time from October 25th to November 4th. The token exchange time is 25th to November 9th. And the Halloween map, during the event, the Halloween Red Church map will replace the regular Red Church map in quick and custom matches. Uh, I guess they don't want to mess with rank, but I don't think, I thought it's just like different um, aesthetics. So, it's not like any game changing stuff, but maybe I'm wrong. Because if it's just aesthetics, why would it matter in ranked? Next, Halloween Exchange. Participate in the seven day login. No treat, all tricks. Well, that sucks. A classic scenes activity during the event to earn hollow tokens. Collect these hollow tokens and exchange them for Halloween costumes such as Hell Ember's Aladdin. Halloween pursuit music as well as other incredible rewards in the Halloween shop. Seven day login, login during the Happy Halloween event and light the pumpkin lanterns to claim amazing rewards. Log in seven days and claim a Halloween limited accessory. That sounds cool. No treat, all tricks. Participate in daily matches during the Happy Halloween event to get happy coins. Earn three for a win, two for a draw, one for a loss. You can earn a max of 10 a day and 70 during the event. Spend five coins to take part in the No Treat Off Tricks activity. Every time you knock on a door, you earn a random reward. And after 14 knocks, you get a limited B quality costume. Next, classic scenes. I am going through this faster than usual because it's a lot <coughs> of information. Classic scenes has each day passes during the Happy Halloween event, new event quest will become available. Complete the quest according to quest descriptions and get amazing rewards such as clues, 
fragments, hollow tokens, and limited Halloween portraits, etc. Quests can be completed before the event ends. Shop items, Halloween theme themed costumes, uh, thief scarecrow, forward black nose, and magician masked gentleman. So it's the sca scarecrow clown costume for thief, the gamekeeper costume for forward, and the ripper costume for magician and accessories. Halloween bucket forward and pinwheel gun. Thief are available in the store. Fragments or echoes can be used to purchase the items. It'll only be for a limited time, so the 25th to the 14th. Characters. The Survivor Dancer is now available in the in-game store. Uh, 3,508 clues or like 600-something echoes will be the same as every Survivor. You can also use her in ranked. Not that you would want to, but you can if you really, really want to. Plus, the dan dancer's Halloween cost, the dancer's costume ballerina and her accessory whip are available in store now. Purchase using fragments or echoes. Equip the whip accessory to get the unique in battle emote whip crack. I think that's the first time I've seen an emote for an, an accessory. And they changed the lowest number of that could be rolled by torn side dice from 5 to 10. Thank you. That's a rip off when you get 5 from a 20 side dice. Um, the gift function has been modified. Sender requires a persona level of 50 to gift. Trust me, don't worry. I have more than 50 persona. Next, battle mechanism. This is a ripper buff. The Ripper's Foggy Night ability has been deleted and replaced with Freezing fro Fog. Foggy Night is the big area on the map, circle of fog. You know how it usually happens or when survivors are in a certain area for a long time, fog comes. And then that, that just got deleted and got replaced with a new ability. Freezing Fog. Fog blades are c created by as fog collects onto Jack's bladed hand. When a certain amount of fog has been amassed, Jack's attacks trigger additional fog blades, expending fog. Fog blades will leave fog. How many times will I say the word fog? In their wake, increasing Jack's movement speed and greatly reduces the cooldown of hidden in mist. Survivors hit by fog blades will leave a trail fog behind them as they move around. Also, the Ripper's hidden and missed ability has been weakened. So, let me just go over the change. Basically, they took away Foggy Night, where it would be the area of fog, and they replaced it with a, a new ability called Freezing Fog. Basically, before you need to be in the fog to use your foggy blades, the projectiles he has that can hit through windows, I think, uh, walls or some walls and stuff. Just I mean, pallets and windows. It can hit through that. But now he has that all the time. You don't have to be in the fog anymore to have that. It just takes time for it to collect. And it has a cooldown on it for him to use it. So he can use that any time. So basically, this is great for looping and kiting because now if you are kiting, he can just hit you from afar with his fog. Plus, it doesn't send him into a recovery time. So he can just, if he's really good, he can just double hit you with it. On top of that, when he uses the fog, if he hits someone with the foggy blade, now... They will their trail will now leave fog behind it. So one that helps you find them better. But if you go in their trail, you, now you have hidden in mist. Now you have the hidden and mist ability where he goes quicker in the fog when he's invisible. Um. So now you have that ability whenever you're by someone instead of it only being available if there's if the fog happened to spawn. Because they were there for a while. Now if you hit someone with the blades. That will spawn. And he goes super quick. So now it's very. If you could get that one foggy blade hit on someone. It's going to be easy to get the second hit. 
also you can use Foggy Blade not to hit Survivor. If it's like a straight path, you can just use it. Just swing your, uh, use your attack button, and as far as the blades go before hitting a wall, that fog will all pop up. So you can give yourself a path of fog, so you can go super quickly to catch up. And because he can use the fog hidden and messed ability a lot more, it's been weakened to compensate for that. Hopefully I did a good job explaining it. Basically, Ripper was the worst hunter in the game before. Now he is one of the best hunters in the game. He'll be A tier and used a lot in high tier play. This is a great buff, fantastic change. I mean, just give a... It just claps for the dev team for this amazing change for Ripper. It really makes him viable. Um, and it, it, it doesn't just change a few numbers around. They found a way to the type of hunter they want him to be to amplify that and to make him excel better at that. The chasing type of hunter fast and they found a way to keep his core gameplay the same, but by giving him a proper rework to still to have him be viable in high rank, and it's really a great change. Okay, enough about that. Next, our uh, hunter support ability Peeper has been modified. This also got buffed. Its visual range has been decreased, but. Survivors in range will be distressed, slowing down their speed, movement, map interaction, healing, decoding, and door opening. This is a big buff for people. I don't know if it will be useful just yet, but the decreased speed is actually a lot. A cipher that will take 110 seconds to do will take 167 seconds to do. So a 57 second boost or something like that. So... It really is a big boost. The thing is, if they can find it quick enough, it's basically useless. But if you can think of great hiding spots for it, to where they can't find the peeper, then it, it's actually very overpowered at that point. Because it stops Cypher rushing by a lot. So it just all depends on the hiding spots for it. Next, the telephone booth that the crowbar appears in will be outlined for survivors when the crowbar appears. Um, this is great. Uh, it's so It was so dumb before how you didn't know which booth and you had to go to everyone. This is great. So you can just go there. Someone can spend their money. They improved the Moon River Park map. Freezing in frames per second. Drops have been reduced. As well as short freezes when survivors get on and off of roller coasters. Also, the probability of playing on it has been slightly decreased. This is great. I know a lot of people had troubles with this map along with Lakeside. It's great to see performance changes. And the better they get this map, the closer it will be able to play in 8v2. They, they plan on having this map available in dual hunter mode. But right now, it's just not performance-wise. It's not good enough. It'll cause insane lag. So... That's why they're doing this stuff on it. Hunter attacks have been modified. Hunters will no longer be able to hit survivors fastened to rocket shears as they left off. This is great. Many times the rocket shears are going and then you hit the rocket shear and that gives you a whole recovery time as if they were still in the game. So this is just good. If you play high rank hunter, you'll know what I mean. Um, it helps out that small percentage. Remove the manual disable function for the Geyser's dash ability, reducing the chances of stopping the ability accidentally. This is great. Um, I've done it. I, I've I, I've stopped it accidentally before, so I like them adding this. Modify the stacking algorithms for the healing speed buffs and debuffs to avoid extreme situations where characters are instantly healed. I know, like, if you have Priestess, with like all of the buffs on her, all the healing buffs, and then you get a doctor go to her, you could click it and like she just healed literally instantly. So uh, they just modified it to make it more fair and less um, for it to not jump so high in speed so quickly. 
modify the display rules for the survivor icons in the top right corner of the screen. Now the name of any survivor placed on a rocket ship will remain highlighted in red for the remainder of the game. Uh, I don't know if that's only when they're on the rocket ship or if they get out, if it's still in red. So then you'll be able to know that then you'll be able to tunnel that survivor. I know survivors will get mad because this literally promotes tunneling, if that's the case. Or it just may be when they're in the chair, which, I mean, there's no real point for it, but whatever. Added display emotes for the perfumer and dance default costumes. The number of spectator spots for custom matches has been increased to three. That's nice. Improve the thief's display emote. New priestess voice effects. That's cool. Graffiti and emotes for the emote wheel has been updated. Graffiti and emotes in the slots can be changed, allowing the player to bring more graffiti into the match. Now they can bring three. That's cool. That's actually really cool. Improved social function. Friends offline time can be checked and players friend list. Thank you, NetE, so much. I mean, actually, thank you. This is what I've wanted since the beginning of the game. I'm maxed out on friends, 150, and I get so many friend requests every day from people watching my videos who want to play with me, and I want to add them. But at the same time, I don't want to delete people who I play with or who watch my YouTube. So it puts me in a predicament where it takes me literally 10 minutes to find someone to delete going back from my memory to think if I've seen them online or not but now I'll just be able to see if someone stopped playing the game and if they have I can just delete them add the new person this is great thank you uh, survivors can now only surrender four minutes after the match begun hunters can now surrender seven minutes instead of eight uh, some bug fixes Uh, obsessive, that bug. I had that bug the other day. Um, that's it for all the bug fixes. I think there was a bug fix to Feaster, um, which is a slight nerf to him. Probably not going to play him that much after. But that's all for the patch notes sure this was a long video it's going to be a big update the maintenance is long i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy it please give it a like if you want to see more videos like this in the future anything identity 5 related you'll find it here on this channel i alien please subscribe to the channel and that'll be all for the video bye